Okay, friends and neighbors, that was a quick close-up demonstration of how I have figured out to play this pretty little tune called Coke Oven March. I learned that tune from a recording of Doc Boggs. Made, the recording was made in the 1960s by Mike Seeger. Um, the history behind the tune is in the early 1900s, Doc was working at a big Coke oven furnace. This is a big, usually they're made of brick. I'm not sure what type Doc worked on, but it's a big industrial iron smelting furnace. And Coke is, is a type of coal, I believe, that's, that's really really potent, really hot stuff. And you can get that iron ore up to a really high temperature and make some really good iron, uh, iron from, the, from the ore. I don't know the details of, of the process, but basically coke, you shovel it into this big, um, this big furnace and you're smelting iron ore to get iron. So it sounds like hot, dangerous, heavy, hard work to me. Uh, so Doc and another man were working at this furnace and they're out there for months and months just working and they had no access to any entertainment, no music, no musical instruments, no banjo. So one of them was so desperate to hear some music that they bought a little cheap, rickety, um, uh, wind-up music box, I guess, at some, some store or wherever from somebody. And uh, it only played one tune, and that tune was what we now know as Coke Oven March. I'm sure it's a piece of written music that has an actual name. I don't know it. If anybody does, I'd, I'd love for you to comment in the section under here and let me know, because I've always been kind of curious about that. And even when I was a kid, we still had music boxes, I remember. I don't think it's a thing anymore, but we actually had several in, in our room growing up. Um, this little, you know, you'd wind a key and you'd usually be a box, and you'd open the box up, might be a little pretty picture inside, and it would play a real pretty tune usually. So Doc and this guy, they just wound it up and list, they used to, they listened to it over and over and over again until he just couldn't get it out of his head. So he worked it out on the banjo. So all this little, um, all that chimey jingly stuff that sounds so pretty is Doc's attempt to emulate the sound of this jingly little music box. So I think that's kind of cool. I think he did a great job. So I figured the tune out in F sharp D, F sharp A, D. Great tuning, you can play a lot of stuff in this. You can play Jay Gould's Daughter, and you can play uh, Old Reuben. Um, lots of other pieces in this tuning, it's a great tuning. So I'm gonna give you the verbal rundown. For those of you who want to learn from tablature, a link will appear in this corner. If you click on this link, it'll take you to patreon.com slash Clifton Hicks for a very modest contribution. It's less than the price of a cup of coffee or a beer per month. You will get access to the tabs for this tune and for every other tune that we teach here on this channel. So hope you'll come and join us. We have well over a thousand active members and uh, it's a lot of fun. So, how do we play this piece of music? We're in Old Reuben tuning, and the basic movements is you're, you're doing your chimes at the 12th fret, and then you're barring at the 5th, and you're barring at the 7th, and then you're doing a little slide on the 1st string from the 3rd to the 4th. So the main thing, you're going to have to figure out how to do this little roll. And there's two ways to do this little roll. The way that, of course, Doc was a three-finger picker, right? I'm just a, a two-finger picker. But the basic roll that Doc is doing is... And I'll break that roll down in the tab. But basically, work out some kind of roll and get that little do-do-do-do. So that's the simple way to do it. I worked out myself a sort of a fancier way to do it that I think has a little more pizzazz. And all I did was I just throw in the thumb uh, on the thumb string and a little more back and forth. That's really how, that, that's how you do it. Um, and there's no set way to play the tune. I mean, who knows what the music box actually sounded like. I like to just sort of take these little pieces and mix them up 
any way that it sounds neat to me and I showed you that in the demonstration so you can you can play that lick open you can play it barred and then you got your your chimes down there if you're not comfortable with doing the harmonics down there I need to do a separate lesson on this but if you're not comfortable with that you can just play those strings open so that would sound like this instead of Just work, you know, work around, have, have some fun with it, figure it out. I really like, uh, and one thing I always like to do when I end that tune is I'll, I'll end it by chiming that first string on the 12th fret. Okay, everybody. If you enjoyed that, if you learned something from that, please give this video a thumbs up please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel here. We'd love to have you. And best of all, I'm going to throw this big link up here again. Click on this link. Visit us at patreon.com slash Clifton Hicks. We would love to have you. Okay, thanks for looking.